All right, you guys, it's Thursday, and it is finally time to build the catio. This has been pushed off due to bad weather, but today is really nice. Tomorrow's gonna be even nicer. It's a perfect time to put it up. I originally thought we'd build one from scratch, but I changed my mind and just ordered one online to make things easier. We're going with yard level access, so an exit out the basement window since it's a walkout basement. And it'll be through the window behind my art desk here, right there. She saw me coming to the door, she came running over. You little turd. She loves rolling on the brick. Yeah. We'll make sure to leave the bottom of the catio just brick so you can roll around on it. <laughs> You're getting all dirty. You're getting all dirty. Now, one thing I'm nervous about is this planter because it's coming up right up to the window and it kind of moves outwards. It's not straight down. So it's even more in the way at the base. So I'm not sure if it's going to fit properly. Oh my goodness. Geese. So first I thought maybe we could remove this, but it could work. We might just have to seal a little gap along the side with an extra piece of wood. Okay, they've been really interested in the birds lately, so I feel like we can't let them out loose anymore because they're going to chase the birdies or something. I'm nervous. Go back in. We're going back in, Jay. Go on. Yes. No. <laughs> We're going in. Go on. Good girl, Midna. The rain has popped off. Now we're going to the window. I used to have a camera van. Okay, I think that's pretty much as good as it's going to get because this stuff is not really off. It's kind of just all stained. Okay. Box one of two. So step one is to build the shelf. Time six, build all six shelves, and that's in box number two. So we are gonna bring down box number two right away, and I think we're just gonna set it outside on the grass. This is what the catio is supposed to look like. Ooh. Look at all these little shelves for captivities. The door comes already on the hinges, yay. Look how gorgeous. Beautiful day, beautiful. It's just charging. So the drill is dead already despite being freshly charged, so maybe the battery's gone bad. And it's got a built-in battery. We can't just click on a new one. 
just like a small baby drill. So we're going to have a screwdriver. <laughs> Maybe it'll get some charge though. I plugged it in, so <laughs> Maybe in half an hour we can try again. So we have a corner piece built and the next step is <laughs> to add a bunch of stuff to the corner piece. These two pieces, the door and the piece above it and this. That's a big step. Yeah, the 10 and the 14 and then attach it. Oh yeah, I'll, okay. I'll build all the panels first. Like, okay. Let's attach the 4 and the 6, the 7 and the 11, okay. the 14 and the 10, and then we can just drill those sides. Yeah, that makes sense. Other. We did a little bit with the ratcheting screwdriver, but it's tough. <laughs> Some of those angles have your knuckles grating against the chicken wire, and so I caught, I got Christian a glove, but it's still not good. He's breaking for lunch though, and it's a good time to do it because we can let the drill charge a little bit more, and I'm gonna start editing this vlog because I forgot to edit it throughout the week. And now I'm paying the price. <laughs> Stink. Are you quality checking the catio stuff? Oh, getting in the sun. Oh my goodness, we have meanies in the sun. Still pretty dirty considering we swept it, huh? Yeah. Okay, I got the charger out here, so every time we set it down, <laughs> we can plug it in. So the catio is completely enclosed, but we have to leave out a panel for the window. So I think for the back side, we'll put a short panel at the top because like it'd be like short with a tall on top, but we'll do a short on top and just leave the bottom panel missing. So that's what would go like above the window here. It would start at like this height. So a short panel like this and then leave the bottom panel off. Because then we still have a bridge connecting to the other side. So this is not just like flimsy whimsy. I mean, we would attach it to the house, but. Yeah, do a demo. Wouldn't it turn the other way? Vertical? I think you got it sideways, but yeah. Yeah, like oh, yeah, that. that makes sense. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, he's in his catio. Look at him. He's having such a great time. All clean and no blood. I'd fully ripped my nail in half. So this panel right here is upside down. So this shelf is technically sitting a little bit low, but we're running into a problem at the bottom where these holes are too low, so the shelf can't actually fit. But what we might try doing is just sawing off this edge, and then it will fit. <laughs> I had to help him brace it, so I couldn't film that, but chunk off. Hopefully that's enough. It's not enough, so... <laughs> We'd either have to drill new holes, which we could have probably done off the get-go. I mean, we should just drill screws into that. Oh, like instead of bolts, just use screws? Yeah. 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 So we probably didn't have to cut that, but who cares? We'll make it work. Whoa. We've got supplies. All right, we just use some screws instead of the bolts. It's in. It's sturdy. Yeah, it's pretty good. This side is good. Yeah, same thing over here. Except this panel's not upside down. Woohoo! No, we, we learned after that mistake. <laughs> wow. See, it's only slightly different. There's just no little gap here on this side compared to this one, but it's very similar. Very similar height. The thing that's really gonna make it sturdy is the roof. True, yeah. 
Because I was but, just debating, like, we put the full panel in and then cut the chicken wire to where we need it. But honestly, I, I think, think we'll, we'll be, be fine. Scary. Yeah, like you said, once the roof is on, and, the and we can attach it to the house. We are going to be putting a panel here. Yeah. So it's still going to be connected. Yeah. So yeah, usually this small panel will go down and then a taller panel on top. But yeah. if we take just the small panel, stick it right here, leave this open. Ah. <laughs> oh my god. Excellent. <laughs> Suck. Yeah, it's locked from the outside. Well, my, my salsa, salsa makes, salsa makes all the pretty girls want to dance and take off their underpants. My salsa. Middle panel first. Yeah, because it has the. Dowels. So the dowels. So yeah, this that one actually sense. is like the problem place. And, and that's it. That's all your whole roof. So question though, are we raising this? Because if we put like a teeny little piece of wood, like we've got those two by twos, so we could raise the roof on one side. I guess actually, you know what? Since it's sloped, there should be a slight slant away. So maybe we don't have to angle the roof because the, the patio is sloped. Ollie, ollie, oxen free, how do I think gonna be? I'll sit in this here chair. So I'd say best you can do is when you lift it up, you should see little holes. Just try to make sure those are lined up on the wood. Yeah, if we didn't center it, because it's supposed to be centered, but now the roof is preventing this from sitting flush. But we can fill this, but this is narrower than this because of the missing panel. <laughs> but this looks like a two by two almost, would almost fit perfectly here. Because we gotta make sure there's no baby gaps. Same with like on that side. That'll be our access point. That bit of window right there. And that first, well, I guess the middle step is kind of a convenient height for them to jump onto. And since we can't get it flush, like if, to fix this, to the wall there's a gap we need like a piece of wood in between it's so crooked compared to the windows <laughs> you can see some of the white of the window here and then it disappears you see it on that side <laughs> we need to make this windstorm proof because we just had a gnarly windstorm the other day and there's a neighbor across the street a piece of their fence is just missing like a plastic panel and the neighbors right next to us it looks like one of their trees got ripped out it's laying on the ground right now so this needs to be sturdy it is sloped away from the house, so that's good. Well, these were the already cuts. So. Oh, yeah. Just kind of see how they fit. Yeah. That looks pretty good. What about at the top? I mean, if we get it tight enough, that might be okay, but it's, yeah. Anything they can fit their head through, they can fit their whole body through. Yeah, that's kind of a wide gap. Like, I'm uncomfortable with the upper gap. Because we could just have it a two by two away from the wall, and then we. Anywhere it's attached to the wall, we add it two by two. We also have some flat pieces of wood from the pallets. I only grabbed one little piece. We might need to go back for more, but just to test. Okay, so we have this two by two here. That's screwed into the wall, and then we're gonna screw the catio into that. And I hope the positioning is right. I was trying to stuff a marker through the crack to mark the wall, but the Sharpie was too fat. I could only get the tip of the Sharpie through, so I was able to mark the bottom correctly, but not the top. But now the bottom mark might be irrelevant because the gap here is pretty narrow. And so we're thinking of just using this to fill the gap. Like it can go against this piece and that's enough width to fill that gap. Cause like, what else are we gonna use this extra piece for? So that's the plan with that one. And we will need another piece at the edge of the catio, but I'm gonna paint this right now. Got my paints, I'm gonna try to mix up what I need. Yeah, that's pretty close. It'll also change color a bit as it dries. Hopefully it lasts. It's craft paint, so. <laughs> it's 
So this is where the catio will attach is along these points. Plus we're probably gonna screw it into the planter or something because we need an attachment point on the far side too. We got one two by two attached here and then we're gonna attach another one underneath and then we can scoot this over against the house and drill the catio into our wood pieces. And hopefully the positioning is good. I know this one is good because we moved the catio back and it was good. And then we measured out where these two were gonna go. So hopefully those two are good. What do you think, Wishy? Hey! Right. Something feels backwards about this arrangement. Come in here, Wishy! <laughs> oh, she's ready for her catio. She says, open this window right meow. All right, we're positioning the seam good. This one, the angle's a little off, but it'll still work. The color looks not as correct now that it's dry. It looks way too cool toned. It's more noticeable on camera. <laughs> Okay, we are basically done, but we do a bit of a crack to seal off still over here. Cause it's, I mean, they probably wouldn't be able to get out through there, but it makes me nervous. I'll plug it with something. There's also this lip in the way, so it might have to be like something above the lip, something below the lip. Oh my goodness, what do you think? Whoa. I was gonna say, we don't need to paint the chicken wire black, but maybe it's hard to film through it. <laughs> yeah, that shelf really is a good height. And it's the one closest to the window, that's lucky. All right, now we just gotta build one for upstairs. <laughs> you want for on the deck. Oh, they're pretty okay on the deck for supervising. And hopefully it survives winter. <laughs> it's not the best quality wood, so. Hopefully it doesn't just split and rot and whatnot. I like the color though, because they also had white and gray, and gray would have matched the house better, but I like the idea of adding some color to the yard, especially as we decorate the yard. Right now it's not really decorated, but <laughs> I like oranges. It's very cottage core. <laughs> hey, I can film her better now. Woohoo! Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, now she wants in. Quick, close it! <laughs> Mid neck. She was lured. She doesn't want to be caged like an animal. You can do it, jump up. Oh. <laughs> you can do it, Missy. Good girl. Oh. Oh. Look at you, princess. Oh. We're gonna have to get some toys in there maybe and just decorate it a little bit. You even get all the little spider friends? <laughs> yeah. This'll never be this clean ever again. Oh, and yes. bug free. Oh, yes. I'm scared if I tried to paint the chicken wire black, it would just get the paint would get everywhere. It would splatter. <laughs> this is probably fine. <laughs> what she <is> doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, good girl. Oh, <laughs> oh there yes. it is. <laughs> yeah, so much mess. Christian just brought some stuff up to the garage. What time is it? quarter after five. I think we're gonna order takeout. <laughs> and I have to finish editing the vlog. I've barely gotten started, so. That'll be how I spend my evening.
We're all cleaned up out here. Hey! <laughs> no! <laughs> shit! <laughs> no! I was gonna say we still have all the packaging to deal with, but maybe we'll deal with that tomorrow. Creeper cam, I can see you, Minoosh! Kiki's going back in. Oh my goodness, two babies. It's now the next day, Friday. Some of those catio clips were from today, the brighter ones, because it was kind of late when we finished the catio. It's a little brighter now. The sun is shining into the catio. I have one of their cat beds out there. I don't know if we're going to use it, but I just threw it out there. It's only out there for today. Oh, who's that? I was just editing the catio vlog up until this point, and the plan was to work on my mousy art some more, but I just need to get away from the computer. I just, I've been sitting there for hours. I need to step away. So I'm gonna press some totes, which I do need to do. As I mentioned in the last vlog, Christian's doing the embroidery, so I'm pressing totes. He might have some time to do some after the shirts are done, but I'm still gonna press a bunch just to make sure we have enough in time for the shop update. We'll do Luna Moth Black, some Strawberry Black, some strawberry red, although I'll probably just do the black ones for today. We'll start with some Luna. What is that? And why are they so fuzzy? First of all, I just opened the bag and there's something on the back of that one. Okay. Okay, these have a lot of fuzzies on them, even though I just opened this pack. Okay, and I wiped down the counter. These are not fuzzies and furs from me and the babies. Okay, maybe I'll do the pre-presses without worrying about the fuzzies. I can order later. What the heck is this? That's a B grade. The black ones are usually great. Like, what is with this pack? This is one of the B grades, but I'm gonna press it anyway. I'm just wondering if it should be a strawberry because will the strawberry cover that little blob? I think it actually might because then that would be upgraded to an A grade. But I have a couple transfers here that have washi tape on them because the star corner was lifted a little bit and so I taped it to try to hold the corner down. It's just curling right back up, okay. Because if these are potentially gonna be B grade transfers, I might as well put them on a bag that I deem to be B grade. Like one of these is pretty minor. There's just like a fray on the handle. Where did that one go? Oh, like this one, the edge wasn't folded over correctly. And so it's got a little bleh. I still have to trim some threads. I haven't gone through to clean these up because I was like, let's wait till they're done. Then I can trim threads and white roller them. Oh my God, sorry for the lawnmower sounds. There, I'll switch the microphone to be front view <laughs> instead of bi-directional. When I was filming the catio stuff, the fountain sounds were picked up so much and just ambient sounds in general. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> like it doesn't sound that loud in real life, but watching back my clips, so obnoxiously loud. So if that bothered you, I'm sorry. Cause there is a fountain in the pond. So this card denotes the distance from the top for the wings. And then these are how far to the side it should be. It should line up with the green sparkles. I think her favorite spot is still being next to the open window without actually being outside. 
also maybe she just needs a cushion like that out there on one of her steps. But we can't let it get rained on. That's the tricky thing. Press the design on the wrong side of this pocket, so I press it again on the correct side. So somebody is gonna get a tote with a double-sided pouch. Okay, I'm not done with the totes. I made supper and then came back down to finish them off. And while the heat press was heating up, I got very distracted and I haven't touched them since and it's like eight o'clock now. <laughs> I'm still gonna finish them tonight, I think. Maybe, we'll see. Uh, one of my distractions was looking up stuff about blanks because I had some blanks come in today. I just wanted to try some other ones. And it's mainly because of the Halloween update. I'm trying to decide what I want to use as a black blank. Because I do love the pigment dyed independent cruise, but this is their black. It's just like a faded black, you know, it's basically gray, but I kind of want pure black. But I'm also struggling because my design has a lot of black. You know, there's Kiki who's black. The sketchbook is basically the black, orange, and yellow on a brown background and so part of me wants to do something on this because we're not gonna see a kiki stitched onto black unless she's like a gray or a deep purple or something so part of me wants to use this but I also kind of want to do two different designs possibly but also I want to zip up and possibly a t-shirt I might be getting in over my head with this but <laughs> yeah I'm buying up this clay color but I'm also looking at black and now, Independent does have solid black crews, and they feel so nice, but I kind of wish they weren't as heavy of a fabric, and they're also long. They go like, well under my butt, and so I was like, well, we could use this. Like, it's a nice bling, but I also want to look around at my other options. I ended up snagging a crew neck and zip up from American Apparel, and they're okay. They're okay. I like how the zip up does not have strings. Although I kind of have a zip up already planned out that I like, it's just an independent zip up and it's lighter weight than this. Um, but I just wanted to see. I kind of do like the really thick neck ribbing here. It's kind of neat. It's really not so bad, but when I put on this Bella and Canvas one, I was like, oh my God, it's very lightweight. Like when I first picked it up, I was like, oh, this is pretty thin, but oh my God, I just love it. I feel like lightweight is just nice for sweatshirts. I don't like when they're too heavy and it's not too long. It sits nicely. Like I can pull it over my butt if I tug it down, but like it sits nicely at my hips without too much bulk. I would say the independent one feels the most premium out of all of them, but that might just be because it's like thicker, squishier. Although it is kind of a hair magnet, but I don't know if that's just the color black because I feel like all of these are becoming fur magnets. So now I'm really liking this. And then I was looking into getting a wholesale account with Bella and Canvas because they have way more colors on their website compared to SNS and other Canadian shirt suppliers. Although I don't know the logistics of shipping to Canada from them because I don't know if they have Canadian warehouses because importing clothes to Canada is really expensive. There's some kind of extra tariff on clothes. Even if I just order a single shirt from another shop based in the US, I have to pay a ton of customs. But I'm just looking into it. We'll see how it goes. Ultimately, I need to design stuff and then I will know for sure what color shirts I need. I just feel like I'm due for a black sweatshirt. But the thing is, if I'm doing a whole bunch of designs, I don't know if I'm gonna go hoodie and crew for everything. It might be like, oh, this design is a crew neck only because the crew necks are more popular than the hoodies. So I might need to narrow it down a bit. Again, we'll see. We'll see how much work I give myself and give Christian. <laughs> how many different designs are gonna come of this Halloween venture? Cause it's Halloween slash fall. I don't want everything to be Halloween themed. So for sure I would like at least one sweatshirt that is just fall-ish or like 
based off some of the elements of the Halloween design. Like it could involve Kiki and Midna and some leaves and flowers. Leave out like the Halloween-y things like the, the bat and the pumpkin. That's not even necessarily fall, you know? It's just based off of the Halloween design using some of the elements. Oh, and this one is specifically the Bell and Canvas 3945. They have a couple different crew necks. This is the 3945. Their other one has lines that cut across the shoulders. I should look at their zip ups on their website. On SNS, they only had one Bella and Canvas zip up, and it didn't look like the same one as my Twitch zip up. Because they only had heathered colors, but my Twitch zip up is just solid gray. But it had the white zipper like mine, which honestly I'm not a huge fan of in terms of a blank, but that Twitch zip up is probably my most worn zip up. I've had it for so long and I do also love the independent one that I have like I got a sample of it a while back and I just keep wearing that same one over and over again. But now if I get this Bella and Canvas account maybe there's more options on their website. I gotta look right now. I'm gonna look right now. Although it won't show me any pricing because those Bella and Canvas zip ups are like 50 bucks each everywhere I'm looking. But it won't let me see the pricing without the account. I can't even see what sizes this comes in because I'm convinced this is just a generic size chart for all men's and unisex. I don't know if this sweatshirt is available up to 5XL. I need to know. Let me in. Activate my account now. Please and thank you. Um, <laughs> how am I supposed to see what's what? Anyway, I need to step away from the computer. Step away, finish those totes. It's 825. I'll at least press them tonight. I can do the lint rollering and folding and sleeving tomorrow. Sunday and I'm about to edit the vlog so I figured I would say goodbye and thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.